So you just got a Steam Deck, and first of all, I'm really excited for you. Congratulations on your purchase. I think you're going to have a really good time with it. Second of all, we got to get you set up so you can have the best time possible with your deck. And the first thing you need to do after you take your Steam Deck out of the box is put a screen protector on it. If there's one thing I've learned in life, it is to always use protection, and the Steam Deck screen is no different. Screen protectors are pretty self-explanatory, but just get one. They are cheap, and they are incredibly effective, and it would be a huge bummer if the first thing you do is put a big old scratch in the middle of your screen and then you're looking at it all the time while you're gaming instead of actually enjoying the games. Now, there is one big caveat, which is that if you bought the high-end Steam Deck with the etched glass, then you probably shouldn't use a screen protector, or at least if you do, it'll negate the effects of the etched glass. But if you bought the regular glossy Steam Deck, then you can either get a regular glossy screen protector, and then that's gonna work just like your regular screen, you're not even gonna notice it, or you can also get an etched glass screen protector, which will give you very similar benefits to what the higher-end etched glass model is. Long story short, what I would recommend is do the glossy unless you're planning on mostly playing it outside or around really bright lights. But with the new OLED Steam Deck, because the screen is significantly brighter than the LCD deck, reflections aren't as big of an issue because you can just crank up the brightness. I'll leave a link to the screen protector that I use on both my decks down in the link below, but honestly, any screen protector should be about the same as long as it's glass. Number two, start downloading some games. And this is gonna sound a little silly, but some of the games these days are absolutely huge. So even if you have pretty good Wi-Fi, it takes a while to download a 120 gig game. And yeah, I'm looking at you, Call of Duty. That way, while we're getting the rest of your Steam Deck set up, you can be downloading games in the background and they'll be ready to use when you actually want to play. And one thing to remember when you're downloading games is that the Steam Deck, unless you do some tinkering, it does not download games while it's in the sleep mode. So you have to have the screen on, basically, in order to download games. So just start downloading some stuff. Do not put it in sleep. Or it will stop downloading and then we can carry on with our list into number three which is to get an sd card you might be thinking to yourself i got the 512 gig steam deck so i don't need an sd card and guess what buddy i thought the same thing but then i went out and i downloaded games like elden ring and call of duty and world War Z aftermath and baldur's gate and all of those games have like about a hundred gigabytes each for their game files so that means if you're playing triple a games the average triple a game is anywhere from 50 to 150 gigs and so you might be able to fit five AAA games on your internal drive, which is just nutty. And while, yeah, I am kind of frustrated that so many games have such enormously large game files, that's just the fact of the matter. So what I would say is unless you're playing entirely indie games, which are generally pretty small, just get an SD card, get at least a half a terabyte, but even something like a terabyte might be better to give yourself some more room to play. And that way you can have more games available and you don't have to be constantly deleting and re-downloading games like I was for the first week before I got an SD card. As far as SD card speeds, you're gonna see a lot of things online, but long story short, the Steam Deck can only read UHS one, which maxes out at 100 megabytes per second. So you want to get a card that can at least do 100 megabytes per second. I would get one that does a little bit over that. So that way the card won't be the bottleneck, but the Steam Deck will be the bottleneck. So you're guaranteeing you're getting the best speeds possible. And I'll put a link to the card that I use in the description box, but just make sure you get one that can do at least 100 megabytes a second. So that way you're getting the best speeds possible. And the first time you plug in a card that hasn't been formatted, you're going to have to format it, but it's very easy to do. All you need to do is go into your settings of your Steam Deck deck going to system and then about the fourth box down it'll say format SD card and you just do that and then it'll format the card and depending on the size of the card it might take a couple minutes but once it's done then the SD card is ready to use and you can install your games on it. Number four is get a dongle. Unless you're only going to be charging your Steam Deck, the single USB Type-C port is probably not gonna cut it. And that's where today's sponsor, Ugreen, comes in. They have a whole lineup of USB Type-C dongles that you can choose from. But the two I would recommend for the Steam Deck are their Revodoc Pro 210 or 313. But you might be asking yourself, why would I want a dongle to begin with? And I'm glad you asked, let me tell you. The main reason that I use a dongle is so that I can plug my Steam Deck into my TV. What either of these dongles allow you to do is you can plug your HDMI cord into your TV and then into the dongle and then that dongle into the Steam Deck and now your Steam Deck is acting like a console and you're plugged up to your TV. But either of these dongles can do a lot more than that. They also give you a bunch of type A ports if you wanted to plug in keyboards or mice or controllers or anything like that. Or you could do Ethernet if your Wi-Fi is bad in your house like mine is often. Then you can have a hardline Ethernet plugged into your Steam Deck and that way you're getting the best and most reliable network connectivity. It also 
also gives you another SD card slot and a micro SD card slot if you want to expand your storage even further, or you could even go as far as to plug in an external drive to the dongle while still being able to power it because the dongle has an extra USB type C port. Both of these hubs have a ton of ports, but I would recommend getting more ports than you think. So that way you only have to carry around one instead of having different hubs for different devices. But as far as the differences between these two specific hubs, the 313 has an extra USB-A port, a display port, which could be big if your monitor uses display port, and an extra audio and mic port. But if you don't think you're gonna need any of those three ports, what I would recommend is just saving your money and getting the 210. And you might be asking yourself, why not just get a Steam Deck dock? And I actually do have a good reason. I ended up buying a Steam Deck dock so that I could use it like this with the TV. But what ended up happening is I ended up not using the dock because it limits your flexibility. The biggest problem I have with a Steam Deck dock is that when you're plugged into the dock, it's really hard to use the Steam Deck itself as a controller. Whereas if you're using one of these type C hubs, you can still use the Steam Deck as a controller, which just gives you more flexibility. And also if you wanted to use one of these hubs with like a laptop or an iPad or a tablet or even your phone, then you can do it. Whereas if you have a Steam Deck dock, you might be able to make it work, but because it's designed for the Steam Deck, it doesn't work as well for other products. So if you wanna check out either of these type C hubs, I'll leave them linked in the description. And thanks again to you, Green, for sponsoring this section of the video. All right, and number five is get yourself at least one Bluetooth controller. It doesn't really matter if it's a PlayStation controller, an Xbox controller, a Nintendo controller, or whatever you want, they all work great with the Steam Deck, but just get at least one of them. What that allows you to do is then you can use that hub we talked about earlier, and you can plug it into your TV, and then you can kick back on the couch and just use a Bluetooth controller and play the Steam Deck much more like a console. The other thing it allows you to do is one of my favorite things to do with the Steam Deck, which is that then you can play multiplayer or split screen on a TV with your friends. One of my favorite ways to use the Steam Deck is I pack the Steam Deck, a hub, and a few Bluetooth controllers, and then you have a whole portable console and I take it over to my buddy's house and then we can play split screen games together. And it's super portable, unlike something like an Xbox or a PlayStation, which yeah, you can take it to your friend's house, but honestly, you're probably not gonna do it because it's just big and clunky and heavy. So that wraps up the must haves for your Steam Deck, but there are a bunch of other stuff that I think will really optimize and make you have a better general experience with your Steam Deck. So let's get started on these extras that didn't quite make the top five list, but they're still good. You can replace your Steam Deck's internal drive. If you have a Steam Deck with a 64 or 256 gig drive, then I would highly recommend replacing it with something bigger. Even if you have a half a terabyte drive, I might honestly get a bigger one just depending on what games you play and if you need the extra storage. The pricing on the 2230 M.2 drives, which is what the Steam Deck uses, have been going down really fast and now you can get half a terabyte for about 30 bucks or as much as two terabytes for about 160 bucks. That sort of pricing isn't bad at all. And if you're afraid of taking the Steam Deck apart, I would encourage you that it's really not as bad as you think. Valve has specifically designed the Steam Deck to be user replaceable for a lot of the components and the drive is one of the easier ones. I'm not very handy and I was able to do it in, I don't know, probably like 15 or 20 minutes. It was pretty easy. So if you want the cheapest way to expand your storage other than an SD card, just get a new drive and replace it yourself. It's really not that hard get an external battery. Now this isn't gonna be for everyone, but if you're someone who wants to play away from the wall like I do, you're probably going to want to get an external battery. There are a bunch of them and I've reviewed quite a few on this channel, but I'll leave a link to two of my favorites down in the description below. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think we really need to go into battery details, but if you wanna get anything other than the two I have linked below, just make sure they can put out at least 45 watts because that's the maximum amount of charging that the Steam Deck can accept while you're playing the device. So as long as it can do 45 watts and it's a relatively reputable company, then probably you're gonna be okay. Don't skimp out on the battery and just get one of the cheapest ones because the cheapest ones generally don't have the capacity that they say they have. So just be careful with that. If you don't wanna get a battery but you still wanna be able to play farther from a wall, then I would recommend just getting a really long charging cable. What I did is I bought a 20 foot charging cable that's braided and then I plugged that in and now, at least for my house, I can play basically anywhere in the house while being plugged in and then I never 
never have to worry about sitting somewhere that's close to an outlet so it can reach. I can basically just sit wherever I want and I know that that cable is going to reach. And if you're gonna get an aftermarket cable, you're gonna need to plug that cable into something that'll plug into the wall. And you might already have a charger that could work, but if you don't, let me give you some recommendations. Like I said earlier, the Steam Deck can charge with up to 45 watts, but if you're weird and particular about heat, you might not want to use that full 45 watts. And let me tell you why. Basically, if you're charging the Steam Deck battery while you're playing at full performance, like you're playing a AAA game, you can cause quite a bit of heat on the Steam Deck itself. So what I do when I don't wanna charge the battery, but I still wanna play the Steam Deck without overheating it, I have a specific 30 watt charger that I use. So that way the Steam Deck is getting enough power that I can play at full tilt. From what I've seen, the maximum draw that the Steam Deck will pull at any given time is about 25 watts. So as long as you have a 30 watt charger, you're never going to be losing charge, but that way you're only trickle charging it so it doesn't cause unnecessary heat on the system itself. Is this a sweaty thing for sweaty Steam Deck nerds like me? Yeah, it is totally a sweaty thing. So if you don't care about that, don't worry at all. Just get a 45 watt charger and you're gonna be fine. But if you are weird like me and you do care about that, then get a 30 watt charger for when you wanna play and don't wanna stress the system out. This is a little thing, but the Steam Deck has paddles on the back that are like L4, R4, and L5 and R5. And I found I can press them, but they're a little bit difficult for me to press. So I found these little bumpers online that are like two super cheap, I'll put them in the description below, and they just allow your fingers to rest a little more comfortably on those bumpers, and it made it way easier for me to press them personally. Not at all necessary, but I found it did increase my Steam Deck experience, and it made me more likely to use those bumpers in games, whereas before I basically just wasn't using them. But now that I have a button four and five, it's actually really convenient to have the extra controls available. In that same vein, if you don't like how the joysticks feel or how tall they are, you can get little adapters that'll either increase the height of the joystick, which may give you better precision in aiming games, or you can get something that changes the texture. I'll leave some links below. I've been using these ones that add an extra, I don't know, maybe an extra centimeter to the joystick. And I do feel like I can aim better. The only inconvenient thing is if you're going to put them in a case and the case fits tightly, then you have to take those little joystick bumpers off before you put it in. Not a big deal, but I just wanted to let you know. And speaking of cases, you can get your Steam Deck a case or a skin. For me personally, Personally, I ended up getting both and the case I got, I ended up not liking it too much because it added more bulk to the Steam Deck and I feel like it actually doesn't need that much protection because it's already a pretty ruggedly built plastic device. So if you're not gonna be throwing it around and dropping it a bunch, then probably it's gonna be fine. But if you do want that extra protection, a case will go a long ways. Or if you just want it to look cool, just get a skin. That's gonna protect from scratches and it won't add any extra bulk. Start putting Steam games on your wish list. I've said it once and I've said it again, don't pay full price for a game. I mean, of course, do what you want, pay full price if you want, but Steam is really good about having sales for games. So what I do and a lot of other people do is when you see a game that you want, just put it on your wish list, and then you can have your notification set up so that when that game goes on sale, Valve will send you an email and then you can see, oh, okay, the game's half off now, now I'll pick it up. And in my experience, if you use your wish list like that, what ends up happening is you end up buying a bunch of games at way below their actual price and then you have more games that you can play and you're not so worried when the new game comes out yeah you might want to play it but you have a big catalog already that you need to work through so then you're less tempted to buy the newest $70 game which really hits your wallet and you end up buying games for like half price or less than half price most of the time so just start adding games to your wish list that you're going to want to play in the future and you can sort those games on Steam by if they run well on the Steam Steam Deck and there you go then it makes it really easy and the last thing before we get super sweaty is try installing Decky. Decky is basically a plugins launcher which allows you to do a bunch of stuff on your Steam Deck like you can increase your vibrancy with one you can add custom boot animations with another you can overclock it with another there are a ton of different community made options and that is going to get you into the world of tinkering with your Steam Deck and let me tell you is it sweaty yes 
But one of my favorite parts about the Steam Deck is that it works straight out of the box. You don't have to do anything. But if you want to tinker with it, you can add some really cool features and really customize it to however you want to use your Steam Deck. And that's something that's really fun. I think Valve has done a fantastic job with empowering their users to make stuff that they want to make. And then pro tip here, what Valve has really done is like they allowed their users to make a bunch of good stuff. And then usually what Valve does is in future updates, if something is really popular, they just add it into the stock Steam OS. But it's kind of a way you can get features before they're released to the rest of the public. I would highly recommend it because it's fun to just be able to tinker with your Steam Deck if that's something you're interested in. But if you're not interested in tinkering, don't worry about it. It's not necessary at all. And that should be more than enough to get you started with your Steam Deck. If you have any specific questions, let me know down below and I'll try to get to them. But that's going to do it for this video. 